meet with uh, the adjunct director of APS. Uh, as is known, APS has a substantial uh, amount of capital to invest, and they are looking for projects where they could partner with government and invest in certain uh, projects. The purpose of the meeting with uh, APS was to discuss the first property, which, as is known, government purchased for a substantial amount of money and then leased to APS for the symbolic amount of one gilder. In my meeting with the adjunct director of APS, I was informed that there exists no development agreement between government and APS. There is a lease agreement with certain terms and conditions, but there is no development agreement. We discussed ways on moving forward quickly. Uh, one of the uh, priorities for me would be to um, develop uh, affordable housing for young professionals, and that was the intention with the, with the purchase of the uh, first property. It was agreed upon to create a work group consisting of members of the Ministry of Roman and APS that was that will be tasked with conducting the necessary researches in order to realize the vision of providing affordable housing. An action plan should be then be put in place to have in the shortest possible time frame a subdivision for the property, indicating the projected roads, building layouts, etc., etc. The end result of that, uh, of that action plan is a very concrete development proposal for the property. This will then be used to create a development agreement between APS and the government. And uh, this group, what we agreed, will be established as soon as possible. And by the 5th of February, they should sit together and come up with some concrete proposals that we could have this established as soon as possible. Again, I have indicated before that, again, a top priority would be to provide af affordable housing. APS is not in the business of developing housing and so forth. However, they do have the, the, the capital to invest. And it is understandable that whatever they invest, they would like a return on their investment. Uh, it is government responsibility to provide housing. Therefore, we will work diligently, the ministry and APS, to realize this project within the shortest period of time. The integrity chamber uh, may or may not become a discussion. I am not going to Holland to discuss the integrity chamber. Uh, there are other issues, but primarily it is um, one an official get to know. While I know and have seen all the players, if you want to call it, in the head, um, it is but you know pertinent and proper uh, that you you have an introductory meeting and you get to know each other in the capacities that you're in. But there is no set agenda to um, dissolve the discussion on the integrity chamber. I, I think it is a, a short passé to some extent in the sense that St. Martin, the St. Martin Parliament, uh, approved the establishing of a, an integrity chamber. So that discussion is not a discussion now to take to the hill. If St. Martin no longer wants the integrity chamber, uh, then St. Martin has to um, initiate that discussion. But there has been no discussion in terms of uh, we want to squash the integrity chamber at this point in time. Uh, the integrity chamber in itself um, has not yet gone into uh, effect because of uh, the, 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 uh, the ombudsman put it before the Constitutional Court and uh, 
it is then to see how we move forward in that area. Um, one, one, of the, one of the issues uh, that we have to contend with um, is the whole financing of such an integrity chamber. Uh, there are still members of parliament who are of the opinion um, that an integrity chamber is not um, ultimately necessary to deal with all of uh, the issues or to deal with the issues that we have. Uh, but that's, that's a different discussion. Um, my focus uh, is not, um, to begin with, the government is here for nine months. Uh, there are priorities that the government uh, has to set for itself. And um, taking on a battle right now about an integrity chamber is not priority one on my agenda. GEBE has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin, powering your home and our economy. Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. Our friendly staff is always there to assist you, whether in person, over the phone, or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective, and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, -E, powering a brighter future. Our friend Mega Wadi is here with tips to save you energy. One, turn your air code temperature up. Two, use a ceiling fan instead. Three, buy energy saving products. Save some green with NVGEBE. That bucket has superpowers. Powers? It makes people suddenly appear. Really? Uh huh. You're here. It makes people suddenly appear. At the right time. Santa! Festive feast from KFC. The taste that brings everyone together. So good. Funny, man. I feel like I got this. I got this. You yes, yes. It's you 30 sure? breaths and two compressions. Give her here. Give her here. Oh, Monique. Look, she wakes No, no, Fernando. It is not 30 breaths and two compressions. It is 30 compressions and two breaths. CPR can be done in three simple steps. Step one. Check and call. Step two, press down or pump. Step three, blow. I got it now. It's 30 compression and two breaths. Yes. C-A-B. <laughs> Bob, I can understand why you're parking so carefully. Of course, when you can get 80% discount on your Be Sure car insurance. <laughs> but that's overdoing it, Bob. You'll be sure, be sure. Yeah. Oh my, oh my. What an inventory list and so unnecessary. But wait, your home contents are all insured by Be Sure. That means that you determine the amount you want to insure. No inventory list, no asshole. Are you be sure, be sure. Need a loan? That's quick and easy. draft ordinance before you uh, has as its aim to amend the tax law of 1940 uh, to facilitate uh, according to international laws and development that citizens can have the right to appeal decisions made in tax cases 
by the Inspectorate of Taxes. Up to now, the Ordinance of 1940 allowed only one instance, namely the Council of Appeal for Tax Affairs, to hear grievances or objections that there might be against decisions taken by the Tax Inspectorate on tax cases. Uh, since prior to, to, to 10 10 10, there was a draft ordinance before the Parliament of the Netherlands Antilles uh, with the intent to change the uh, tax law of 1940, uh, but it went to bed for quite some years and it's been recently picked up again uh, to, to facilitate that citizens will have more than one instance of appeal to redress complaints they might have against rulings made by the tax inspectorate. This ordinance replaces the Council for Tax Appeal Matters, replaces that council with the Court of First Instance. So henceforth, with this law, you can apply to the Court of First Instance uh, to have whatever grievances you might have against decisions taken by the inspector ruled by the court of first instance. Following that, you will have an appeal in, in instance, namely the, court of the, the Common Court of Appeal, who uh, for a second time would review the decision of the court of first instance if you don't agree with that. And thirdly, also the Supreme Court you can appeal to if you don't agree with a decision made by the Court of Appeals. This development is, has its roots in the AVRM, the European Rights uh, for Human Rights, as well as the treaty regarding uh, political and civil laws internationally. So with this draft law, we will be brought into the realm of what the development has been in the international arena, affording citizens more than one instance to have their appeal heard. The, um, <clears throat> the changes, like I mentioned before, are basically to replace the Council of Appeal and Tax Matters and uh, the ordinance is an ordinance that has to be adopted by all of the countries in the kingdom, in the Caribbean part of the kingdom. Uh, and it is based on uniformity. So the same identical law uh, has already been passed, I believe, by Aruba. Uh, and I think we're second in line to have this law adopted. Uh, before the law can go into in force, all of the islands in the Dutch Caribbean will have to adopt the same law. And immediately following that, all cases that are before the appeal council in tax cases will revert to the court of instance, first instance, and then the entire law would take complete effect. Going forward, you and I are therefore obligated to be unrelenting and committed in promoting a more just society anchored on the real potential of an educated, healthy, employed, and devoted to country population. The promotion of a more just society with improved opportunities and privileges based on the pillars of education, health care, employment, and devotion to, co to country are or one calls for us to re-examine and invest in the educational preparation of our people. Two calls for us to continue to invest in the quality and access to health care for all. Three calls for us to invest in improved employment and economic opportunities for all our people. 
and four, calls for us to strengthen our and to instill in our youth the values of mutual respect and appreciation for our nation's cause. The collective power of the interaction of these four pillars of a just society has the potential to bend the arc of our experiences towards further progress. This because of their collective impact on greater and equal opportunity and thus on the creation of social harmony, on decreasing crime, on increasing economic growth, and on fostering unity. Ladies and gentlemen, to do so, we must remind ourselves that achieving our national motto of always progressing cannot be achieved by one or two individuals. We must instead stand devoted and shoulder to shoulder. It is in that spirit that I, as your governor, hereby offer my shoulder and call on all to join me to use this year to dedicate our actions to the further building of the pillars of education, healthcare, employment, and devotion to country for a more just St. Martin. For it is only through such united and purposeful action that we can continue to bend our arc towards further progress and maintain St. Martin as a beacon of hope and opportunity for generations to come. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with that challenge and depending on us to tirelessly, tirelessly put our shoulders under the tasks ahead that I close and hereby also on behalf of my wife, Mary Louise, wish you and your family a year of peace, health, happiness, and continued progress. Thank you, God bless you, and may God bless St. Martin and protect its coast. So what's your idea of holiday happiness? Watching the kids open presents, cooking in our new kitchen, the look on his face. Add to your holiday happiness with a loan from Scotiabank and you could win a trip for two to Miami and other great prizes. Visit your Scotiabank branch today and talk to a representative about getting your loan. Contest ends January 15th. Conditions apply. Scotiabank. Discover what's possible.
introduction, Mr. Chairman, the IPCO meetings are usually preceded by tripartite meetings between the three Dutch Caribbean countries. This was the case as well. Items were extremely important that were dis discussed. I believe, given all the given all the consideration due to the other topics on the agenda, the matter of the dispute regulation was critical. We were able, in our opinion, knowing the discussions, knowing the sentiments, knowing the stand taken by the Dutch Minister for Kingdom Relations, that we, with our conclusion in this IPCO meeting, got a lot. We, we advanced where this topic is concerned. However, and this is where my word of caution comes in, if, again, the governments do not, and always in particular, for which we can speak, do not follow up and pick up their responsibility in this area, then the gains that we have made in IPCO would be in vain. So I think that's, that's extremely important. The, as I mentioned, we received a, um, a lot of documentation from the, from the government and were able, for example, to contribute to the discussion on, the, um, on energy. We were able to present um, St. Martin's energy policy of 2014. And um, so we were able to give information. What has St. Martin been doing as far as participation in the discussions regarding especially the SIDS, which was also a topic um, for both the tripartite and the IPCO. Uh, we, we, had, we got that information as well, small island developing states, by the way, of, um, which we refer to as the SIDS. Having stated all of this, I think it's important that as CCARE and Parliament, we um, immediately now already start with the follow-up from our governments on the areas that we have agreed to um, in the tripartite and in the, in the IPCO. It's important and that the pressure be kept for Parliament to receive the information, the feedback, what government is doing, etc. With respect to with respect to um, what we received from government, I think it's important that, generally speaking, but especially when we are going to be presenting it during tripartite and or IPCO meetings, that we have a debate, a discussion in parliament about some of these policies. For example, the energy policy. What are the goals of the government of St. Martin where this is concerned? What are the objectives of a policy on energy? Where are we going with it? How will it be financed? Who are the stakeholders? So I think separate from IPCO and um, the tripartite, it's important that policies such as that um, we talk, such as the energy policy, I want to mention that specifically. There is uh, foreign relations policy of government. So when we spoke about many items with respect to foreign relations and foreign affairs, I think they should be pinned or hung under a policy on foreign affairs of St. Martin. There was a statement stated that the IPCO went well and we accomplished or we are a step further. I, I, I talked to my colleagues from the other islands, and I looked at it. This is about the, the, the dispute commission. I don't think that we progressed there, my personal opinion. I don't think we progressed. I think that we ended up saving Holland from the discussions that I was having outside of the, the meetings. It was basically like, if we continued to push this direction, there, was a, there could be a tendency for the Dutch government to fall. Because they can agree with us in that meeting, but when they go back, it's a whole different story because Plasker, whatever you, however you pronounce his name, will not support what we wanted. That, um, that commission. And I, I said to myself, you know, it's so unfortunate because if this is true, 
we help save them, but if it's on the other way around, they will never do that for us. So there comes a point in time when we have to say, hey, do we keep pushing or do we agree just to get along and hopefully we will reach the next stage. I am hoping that what was agreed upon now that the, 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 the deadline for May 3rd, um, March 6, 2016 works in our favor. I honestly hope that and that they don't disappoint what I already feel is going to be a disappointment. I, I really didn't agree with that specific aspect in our approach and saying, okay, we will now comply. I mean, for me personally, if they had come out and tell us from the beginning, look, this is what's happening because if we do this, we're going to have an unstable government in Holland and this can be the possibility, but that wasn't spoken about at all. But you can read through the lines and see that I, I, we didn't win at all. We didn't accomplish anything. It just, it just, to me, it's just a delay of what is to come. And I, 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 um, um, again, we had a great meeting. The president, to give her credit, we, we, it went well. But that specific aspect, did we really accomplish what we wanted? No, I thought, I think that we went a couple steps backwards and Holland did not give us, the, the intention was never to give us what we wanted. And I'm just waiting to see what the next step will be. And indeed, we are going to be needing the information from the government and we knew, and I have said it before, last government, this government, if we don't get the information, we cannot present. We cannot stand up for St. Martin. We cannot say or know what direction that St. Martin wants to go if we don't get that information. So I'm hoping that this time around that the information is um, forthcoming and that we are able to prepare for whatever is next, Mr. Chairman. Thank you.